Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody in the Classical Cypher series. Today we will have a look at a very, very interesting encryption machine. And we will have a look at the US Sigaba machine. And the Sigaba is a, or was a very secure machine that was used by the United States and it was used until the 1950s. I structured this video into four different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the short history of the Sigaba. Then we will in detail analyze how the Sigaba works. After that, we will have a look at the key space size of the Sigaba. And finally, we will see our new component, which implements the Sigaba in Cryptool 2. First, let's have a look at the short history of the Sigaba. The SECM, or Electrical Cipher Machine Mark II, is an electromechanical encryption device which was used by the US during World War II and until the 1950s. The machine was also known as Sigaba, or Converter M134 by the Army, or CSP888 or 889 by the Navy, and a modified Navy version was named the CSP 2900. Sigaba was considered highly secure and it was also employed for strategic communications, for instance, between Churchill and Roosevelt. Sigaba was invented by William Friedman and we already know William Friedman from previous videos on this channel. You can see here William Frederick Friedman on the right side. And Friedman first used a paper tape as a key to advance Sigaba's rotors. And his associate Frank Rowlett, which you can see here on the right side, I'm sorry I didn't found a sharper picture. This picture was taken from the Wikipedia. And Frank Rowlett invented the idea of using other rotors instead of using paper tapes to advance the cipher rotors. What that means we will see later. And, as I found out, just over 10,000 machines were built. Now, let's analyze how Sigaba works. And, as I already said, Sigaba is an electric rotor encryption machine. You can find a really nice picture from US patent 6175625 filed in 1944, but not issued until 2001. And I found this nice picture in the English Wikipedia. You can see here this picture of the Sigaba. And the machine basically works like an Enigma. And we already had videos about the Enigma, so I highly suggest that if you have no clue how rotor encryption machines work, and in particular how the Enigma works, you should have a look at these videos. But it is much smarter and more complex than the Enigma. And <laughs> the complexity made the machine unusable on the battlefield, as in contrast to Enigma. Enigma could be carried by soldiers and could be used by soldiers. But the Sigaba was very complex and very heavy and it was very difficult to transport it, so it was not used in the fields. Then Sigaba contains a total of 15 rotors, while Enigma has only 3 or 4. I think this is very impressive. Then the Sigaba has no reflector, and the reflector was one of the main weaknesses of Enigma. And Friedman and his um, worker, they knew these weaknesses, so they get rid of this weakness. And that also means that current has to flow in reverse direction through the machine for the decryption. And Sigaba has no plugboard. For instance, the Enigma had a plugboard, but the Sigaba didn't need a plugboard. And then we know that Sigaba was very secure, and due to its security, it was never broken in the time it was used. Currently, there are very interesting approaches to break Sigaba, and I created some Sigaba challenges on Mystery Twister on our Crypto Challenge website, and using these attacks, these challenges have already been broken. So if you're interested in that, have a look at Mystery Twister. Now, we have a look in detail at the model CSP889. And the, as I already said, the GABA has a total of 15 rotors. But not all rotors are the same. We have five cipher rotors, 
we have five control rotors. And these two five rotor types together are 10 similar 26 ladder rotors in total. So that means you can choose these 10 rotors and divide these among the cipher rotors and the control rotors. These are all interchangeable. And then we have special kind of rotors, which are the five index rotors. And each of the index rotors has 10 connections. So we have 10 digits instead of letters on these rotors. Then the control and index rotors control the movement of the cipher rotors. What this means, we will see later. And cipher and control rotors can be put into the machine in normal orientation or in reversed orientation. And this further increased the key space size of the machine. So you can say instead of having 10 rotors to choose from, you have 20 rotors to choose from. Now let's have a look at the functional diagram of the Sigaba. And as you can see here, we have more or less three main parts. Um, it starts with the control rotors here below. We have five control rotors and current goes here from right to left through these rotors. How this works in detail, we will see on the next slides. Then from the control rotors, the current goes through the index rotors here and then the index rotors are connected to a so-called stepping control. And the stepping control then controls the stepping of the five cipher rotors. And the letters we want to encrypt or decrypt go through the cipher rotors. For instance, plain text goes from left to right through the cipher rotors, so current for the plain text. And to decipher or decrypt letters, the cipher text goes from right to left through the cipher rotors. Now let's analyze in detail how these all work together. First, we have a look at the control rotors. And as I already said, control rotors are five out of the 10 interchangeable 26 ladder rotors. And control and cipher rotors move through the alphabet in reverse order. So they are going backwards when installed in normal orientation and they move in normal alphabetic order when installed in reverse orientation. And the leftmost and rightmost rotors of the control rotors, you can see these two rotors here, they don't move at all. And the control rotor bank, this, this here is a control rotor bank, has a slow moving rotor on the left side in the middle. Then we have a fast moving rotor in the middle and we have a medium fast moving rotor, which we have here. So these rotors fulfill an irregular movement as in contrast to Enigma, which rotors move regularly. So sometimes only the slow motor rule, uh, only the fast rotor moves, then sometimes also the medium rotor additionally moves, and then seldomly the slow rotor moves. And these together form an irregular uh, movement. And the four inputs, F, G, H, and I, you remember that these rotors here have 26 letters, and F, G, H, and I have always current. So always current comes from F, from G, from H, from I in this rotor. And then the current go through all these rotors and gets transposed. So it changes the position, the letter position. And on the left side, you have four outputs where we have current. And of course, these four outputs change all the time after pressing a single button or a single um, letter, uh, typing a single letter, this output always changes with the control rotors. Now let's have a look at the index logic. After the control rotors, current goes into the index logic. And the index, index logic consists of five rotors, each having 10 connections. So you have here this index logic and you have five 10, uh, connect, uh, 10 rotors with 10 connections in this. And you can exchange, of course, these rotors. And then the index input logic that the input of the index rotors maps these 26 letter inputs here. You remember we get four inputs to these to the 10 inputs of the index rotor here. Then the current is um, going through all these rotors. And of course it changes the position all the time because of the wiring of the rotors. And then we have an index output logic on the right side that maps the 10 outputs to the five cipher rotors of our, yeah, of our cipher rotors. And 
Based on the input logic, a minimum of one and a maximum of four cipher rotors move at any time. And the index rotors here, they don't move. So this is just a permutation of the current or of the logic of the current that goes into these um, index rotors here. And we can create or we created here two tables that define how this input logic and this output logic works. So for the 10 input logic um, connections here, for each connection, we have another logic. And the very smart thing they did is that they have only one input for each letter. So you will never find a B on another input. You will never find a C on another input or on another rotor and uh, input, I mean, and so on and so on. So when that, that, that also means that we can only have a minimum of one and a maximum of four outputs here. Why is that so? Let's assume our um, control rotors give us A, B, C, and D. So A means the input 10 has current. B means input 2 has a current. Then C means input 3 has current. And D means input 4 has current. So we have four inputs for the index rotors here. And then we have four outputs. We have one to, uh, 10, 1, 2, 3. That means here 10, 1, 2, 3. So in the end, two rotors would move. But with four inputs that we assign here, we can have, for instance, that I1, I8, I6, and I4 get current. That means four rotors could move. But we could never have five. And we will always have one. For instance, let's assume that the input is L, M, N, and O. So only input seven gets current. That means only rotor three is moving one step. So I think this is really smart design. So the rotors advance at minimum one of these or at maximum four of the rotors. Now let's have a look at the actual decryption performed by the cipher rotors. And the current for a plain text letter is sent through all of these five cipher rotors. For instance, we have here a plain text letter PI. We send the current into the leftmost rotor. It gets transposed, then in the next run, transposed, transposed, and so on. And then, as with Enigma, we get a cipher text symbol. But with the Enigma, we would have here a reflector that would help, uh, that would lead to the current flowing back through the machine. But since we don't have a reflector, the PI and the CI could be the same letter. For instance, we could encrypt an A and we could have an A here as an output. But if we have, when we have a reflector here and it, the A goes here in, it's not electrically possible that the A would come out. So that is very smart in the design. This also means when we want to decrypt the um, ciphertext letter I, we have to reverse the flow of the current. So the flow then would be from right to left. So we would send the current here in, it would follow the same way, and then as an output or plain text letter or original, for instance, A would come out. And as I already said, we have here the stepping control, which is controlled by our control rotors and our index rotors. And we have here five connections to the rotors. So these connections mean when we have current here, a, a motor would move this rotor one step. And at any one time, only one of these or at most four of these can move. This is the irregular or the very irregular um, stepping of the machine. And I think this design is very smart. So this made uh, Sigaba a very, very secure machine. Now let's have a look at the key space size of the Sigaba. And we have two parts of the key space. At first, we have the cipher and control rotors. You remember, we have a set of 10 rotors. Or we assume we only have 10 rotors. Maybe they had even more. This would further increase the size of the key space. But here we assume we only have 10 rotors. That means we have factorial 10 possibilities to select cipher and control rotors. So we have 10 for the first, 9 for the second, 8, and so on. Each rotor of these may be set in normal or reversed orientation into the machine. And each rotor then has 26 letters, so 26 different start positions. And 
When we create an equation out of this, we, are, we also color this here that you better see where these numbers come from. We have to multiply these numbers. So we have 10 factorial for the possibilities, two to the power of 10 for normal or reversed orientation, and 26 to the power of 10 for the different start positions. And this gives us an overall key space size only for cipher and control rotors of two to the power of 78.8. Then the next part of our key space is the index rotor key space. You remember we have five different index rotors and these can only be put in normal uh, orientation in the machine. That means we have five factorial possibilities to put the index rotors into the machine. For the first one we have five, for the second one we have four and three and two and one. This is five factorial. And each of the index rotors, since it has 10 different um, digits or 10 different start positions, uh, gives us yes, 10 different start positions. And we have to multiply these numbers. We have 5 factorial multiplied 10 to the power of 5, which is about 2 to the power of 35.5 as our second part of the key space. But since we have a stationary permutation of the 10 inputs and the 10 outputs are mapped by the index output logic into only 5 outputs, we have to reduce this as a practical key space size. Instead of that, we have 10 factorial divided by 2 to the power of 5. And this is only 130,400 possibilities, which is about 2 to the power of 16.8. So this is much smaller than this here. And this means that our overall practical key space size is the multiplication of this number and this number. And this gives us a total key space size of 2 to the power of 95.6. Nevertheless, I think this is a very huge, it's incredible key space size and the machine due to its construction was very secure. So really a well designed and well made encryption machine. Now we have the fourth part of this video and in the fourth part of this video, we will have a look at the Sigaba in Crypto 2 <laughs> over the last two weeks or over the last week. I implemented the Sigaba component in Crypto2. Thanks to George Lesri, I got Java code that implements a machine and I was able to transfer the Java code to C Sharp and create a nice Crypto2 component that you can now use in the nightly build. So if you're interested, you have to download the nightly build. It's not in the release yet. And then you can play with the Sigaba on your own. But now let's have a look at the Sigaba in Crypto2. I'm here now in Crypto2 and I want to have a look at the Sigaba. And to do so, in the template section, I search for Sigaba. And the Sigaba Cypher Machine template is a template that I created last week and it allows you to encrypt and decrypt using the Sigaba. So we have here two Sigaba components, one for encryption, one for decryption. And you can see here a key input. So you can define the key as a text or in a text input. The first part of the key here is for the, uh, let's have a look, cipher rotors. Then we have the control rotors. Then we have the index rotors. And this is only the definition which rotors should be used at which position. And then you can define the start positions. You have the start positions of the cipher rotors. You have the start positions of the control rotors and you have the positions of the index rotors. And when we press play now, you can see that this text here is encrypted to a cipher text. And then of course the cipher text here is decrypted by the Sigaba component to plain text again. The interesting part here is that you can see here we have spaces. And this component and the Sigaba was also able to do so. It encrypts spaces to the letter Z. And then during the decryption, it replaces the letter Z by a space. But this also means when you have Z in your uh, plain text, like here I have Z, 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 A, then in the decryption, you have here space, space, space. And you can change this behavior. Let's just click here, stop. We want to uh, change that space as here, this is use Z as space. So this machine here or this component will replace the Z as the space here by Z. And then during the decryption, we can disable this. And when we then press play, <laughs> we see 
that we have here in our deciphered or decrypted plain text, we have the Z where we had the spaces. But since the Z is a very seldom letter in English, we can switch it back to use that as space. And we have nicely separated words here. And of course, we can remove the ZZZA here. So what else can we do with this component? So this component not only uh, implements one CGABA, it implements two. We have the CSP889 and the later model CSP2900. And now I change this to CSP2900. And of course, when I now press play and I have the wrong model here, we cannot decrypt. So we have to stop this. And of course, we have to change the second model also to the same CGABA machine. When we now press play, we see that we have the same model, so decryption is possible again. Now let's have a deeper look at the component and what the component offers. As I already said, you can remove the input here and then you can define the key in the settings. You could define the key also previously in the settings, but when we have a connected text input with a key, it overrides the settings of the machine. These settings then are ignored. And the settings of these two machines are the same. So for instance, for the first cipher rotor, we select rotor with the number zero. And then here you can define, do we want to put the rotor reversed or in the normal orientation into the machine? And you have this also for the control rotors here and for the index rotors. And since I thought it's interesting to have, or usually you, pre, or I would first change, uh, of course, uh, um, cipher rotors, for instance, on a daily basis. And then for each message, you usually change the start positions. Therefore, the st rotor start pos positions would change more frequently. That's why I put these at the beginning here. So for instance, you could here change this E to F. And when we now press play, of course, we have the wrong start position and this decryption doesn't work. So we have to go here, change the start position also to F, press play. And then of course, the decryption works again. And there's one final option that you can choose here. You can choose how the component should handle um, invalid or unknown symbols. For instance, uh, the full stops and so on. If we have a full stop here and we set the unknown symbol handling to ignore, that means that it will ignore these and you will have this full stop here and here. But you could also change this to remove and all the invalid symbols are removed. And of course, you can change this to replace with question mark, and then you would see all the unknown symbols in your cipher text. Yeah, and I think this is really nice to have the Sigaba now in Crypto 2. The really amazing thing is that we probably have the original rotors. So I always thought that the original rotors are kept secret or that we do not know these and they are not published. And of course, these are now in Cryptool 2. So you can use Cryptool 2 to encrypt texts with uh, original Cgaba and you can decrypt texts with an original Cgaba. And as I already said, of course, if you're interested in um, working on the Sigaba on your own, you could um, go to Mystery Twister and search for Sigaba because we have new challenges with this incredible cipher machine. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to discuss and show you in this video. I wanted to show you how the Sigaba works. I think I did this. I hope you understood everything. And I wanted to present our new Sigaba component in Crypto 2. And of course, you could now download the nightly build and play and work and test it on your own. So yeah, as I said, this is everything I wanted to do today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, you know what to do, give a thumbs down. Also, I would really appreciate if you subscribe to this channel. This really helps us to grow the channel and make Crypto 2 more popular. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.